Ladies and gentlemen, this is Internet Personality Evangelist, and Corbot V is returning at long last with their second original release. But before it comes out, a variant was debuted at TFCon 2016. The mass release will be an Alicon called Mugger, but this version is a Dinobot called Savage. He's got different accessories, different colors, and a different head sculpt, but I am a hungry Alicon fanboy, so I still jumped on this guy to tide me over until the proper goody chomping version comes out later this year. This alt mode is unmistakable, even if it has taken a few aesthetic liberties. It... hang on, it doesn't have to look this unflattering. There. More about that in the articulation segment. The spikes are all there, all accounted for, and all kinda sharp, possibly brittle. Don't step on this toy. The shape and silhouette are fairly solid, but the lack of a bulky shoulder pod makes the already skinny arms look even more puny compared to the bestial thick body they're attached to. Also, the head is a little flatter and a touch wider than I recall from the source material, though that's not much of a game changer for me. Savage comes in very dino body colors, which the design wears rather well. And hey, the inside of his mouth is all red with tungeal bloody mastication power. Also, if you weren't aware, Corbot V's Alicon is nestled within the Legends-esque pocket scale. It's not a tiny toy by any means, thanks to the big jaw and respectable tail, but it's not going to tower over any of your deluxe size Autobots anytime soon. Those upcoming Titans return Legends Gnaws, though. As for weapon storage, there isn't any to speak of. You can rotate the robot fists a little to add a pair of peg holes on his back, and the gun doesn't look too terrible up there. His sword just protrudes up like a flagpole if you try to plug it in as well, which is basically a dumb idea you shouldn't engage with. Don't validate me. This isn't the first posable Alicon in the world, but he's still a pretty decently posable Alicon, and that's not really mutually exclusive from being the first or second. Anyway, his head can move forward and backward on a transformation joint, and uh, this is very helpful with emoting, uh, because, like, you know, that stock still position he's in, like this, it just doesn't balance super well. It, it looks okay, but it's not amazing. The only problem with this is that you do open up a seam here, and the farther down you go, the more of a seam you're opening up. So just just a, a little a little touch in this direction, like about that far, uh, is best. The mouth can also open. Uh, how wide, you say? All the way, baby! His arms can rotate back and forth on this butterfly-ish hinge. They can also swivel on a straight up uh, horizontal swivel. Horizontal if you're this way. There is also a ball socket joint for the elbow. It only has a cutout here, so you know, it can do that, and then he can swivel his forearm and hand around like this. The main alligator posability is doing this. That's, that's about it. So it's like, there's if there was one more joint, like if, it, if this whole assembly could also go downwards, I think that would have been awesome. But this ain't bad for the size, I guess. Uh, the tail is cool. Uh, there are three ball socket joints. There's one here, one here, and one here. These three segments, basically. Going up and down, you see a little bit more. Uh, and that's it. Like, these other segments don't do that because this is, well, this is a transformation joint, and this is a transformation joint for something else. These can both be useful still when posing, but they do start to, like the neck, open up gaps, so be aware of that. But these three ball joints, the one on the tip isn't super great, but the other two make up for it enormously, because you can swish left and right, you can also swish up and down. It's a great little joint. Finally, the legs. Uh, the feet can swivel left and right. The knee can bend forward and backwards. That's technically about it, because... Even though there's more, like, leg-looking mush here, it's kind of locked in place because uh, it's full of this locked block here. You can undo this, even undo some of the transformation to get more posability if you want. But if you try to keep things all nice and kosher, like this, also a light one off, I don't know if you noticed, then that's about it. Also, this isn't just a, a you know, left and right swivel. You can pop this out to make it into a full, like, ball socket ankle. Thing is, I don't get a whole lot out of that in Alicon mode. Uh, I get more out of leaving it flat and then just bending the knees and swiveling the feet a little bit. Just, it has to do with the shape of this guy and the way he balances. I just feel like I accomplish more that way. But, you know, play around. You have a lot of joints in here to mess with if you want. And, uh, you can unlock a few more by opening up the transformation a little. But speaking of that transformation, what if we just open it up all the way? 
Savage's smaller scale also bestows him one of the nicer kinds of simple transformations, where just enough is happening to keep things interesting, but the process is also over before it overstays its welcome. The only tricky part is the somewhat specific order of operations in switching the beast arms out for the bot arms, especially since the aforementioned beast arms don't really go anywhere other than out of the way, and the also aforementioned bot arms don't actually snap into place at the shoulders. Everything else moves in big happy chunks though, and the hand feel aspect of the conversion generally leaves a confident and solid feeling in spite of the lack of many audible click locks. This guy is adorable, calling back to Power Core Combiner's Grimstone in his thickness and stump factor. Despite being a simple head-swapped recolor, Savage sheds much of his Alicon identity in this mode thanks to the color layout, and the lack of a giant gator-tastic chomper head. The red shoulder frames around his upper body do a ton to identify him as a heroic warrior of cyber prehistory, and the silhouette is incredibly endearing. Even with the obvious gator hands on his back, he wears much of his visible alt mode aspects well, incorporating them into the robot form and confidently stating that they're all supposed to be there. Even the gator hands, they're like a, a, a hot topic accessory. The head sculpt is original to Savage and totally looks like a Joe Average Dinobot wearing a slightly cliff jumpery helmet. It's a little sunken into the socket of his bulgingly armored collar, but the hardest part for me to deal with is the inexplicable way that it constantly strikes me as either too large or too small for the body, depending on the viewing angle. I can't explain why it gives me those varying impressions, so I'm not sure if it's even the toy's problem or my own. Perhaps I am just such an Alicon fanboy I subconsciously reject this head's lack of a fin, or or its regular face that doesn't have a giant creepy underbite for eating candy, given to me by a slightly startled old man. Savage includes two weapons in the box, the collimated laser taser and Dino Fury, blessed blade of the primitives. So a black gun and a red sword. They look cool. There's nowhere to put them other than his hands and I would have loved a way to peg the pieces onto his hips or back. At TFCon, Savage came with a baggie that included two more weapons, a different black gun and a different red sword. They are also cool. They also have nowhere to store. I'm not gonna turn down the ability to do akimbo guns or dual wield swords. The weapons are also all a little small and thick, playing well with Savage's aesthetic and adding another flavor of accessory to my imaginary accessory storage bin. Savage's robot head is on a ball socket joint which allows it to look left and right. It's a little bit tight. Uh, it also, being a ball socket joint with a lot of room underneath, has a little bit of sideways tilt. This is really hurting my finger because those horns are going right into my flesh. And then he can look up and down, more so up than down. And then the transformation joint that his head is on allows for a lower axis of forward-backwards motion, which doesn't do a ton, but it does a little bit, especially when you're trying to unrecess his head uh, for whatever your given viewing angle is. His shoulders are on ball socket joints. They go about that far with the shoulder armor there. The shoulder armor is weird. It's pegged around this spike. So you gotta move it down and then when you move it down, you can see there's a lot more shoulder range there. But it's on this one a lot tighter than this one, but this is really tight. It can be a little freaky to move around if you don't know it's supposed to move there. And uh, this side has popped off the spike before. I've just pushed it back on. Uh, it's just a friction connection. It's a bit tighter here than it is over there. Uh, but it allows for full range of motion. Unfortunately, because the shoulder doesn't lock, you can do that real easy too. Uh, man, do I wish there was just a little knips right there. There is a big elbow hinge, which uh, gives you a proper bend. There's just a dedicated bicep swivel above it. And there's a wrist joint. That wrist joint on a figure this size is delightful. There is no hoist joint whatsoever. Uh, this is from a, a myriad of reasons, aside from the fact that, like, you've seen how this transforms, like, all this is, like, a jigsaw rotating thing. There's also a big hollow space here because this head is stuck inside there. Also, he's a shark man. There's a head stuck in here. Uh, a waist joint would have to be below it. Those are two separate pieces that have come together. A waist joint would have been very difficult to fit into something this size, I think. His hips are on ball socket joints. They can go forward and back real easy. Uh, they can go out about that far. He cannot do the splits. Uh, Van Damme test ain't happening on this guy. And there's a little bit of inward-outward butterfly-ish horizontal motion as well. Uh, and that's basically the thigh swivel. Because uh, he's got like a big hinge knee. Bends solid like 92 degrees. Uh, but there is no horizontal swivel on the leg 
uh, anywhere around the knee. There is down here on the foot, because this is connected with a ball socket joint, uh, you can turn it left and right, it can tilt forward and backwards a little bit, it can wiggle left and right a little bit. It's a good joint, and I know that there is a sect of, uh, of toy collectors for whom a thigh swivel is not necessary if there is a boot swivel, or, you know, a shoe swivel. So, I think if I wanted one extra piece of articulation on this guy, like, I don't know how a, a waist could have worked, I would have loved to see uh, this arrangement here on here. Now, there is an easy, clear reason why, like, that literal, literal arrangement isn't happening, is because this whole thigh is thollowed. Thollow? This whole thigh is hollow to accommodate this chunk of crotch when that splits and it all turns into the beast mode. Transformation requires a hollow leg to be filled with this stuff. There's no room for a mushroom peg in there. But darn, like, maybe if the legs could have been just a, a tad longer, an extendy bit, something to put a swivel in there, would have topped this guy off real nice. As it is, his posability's fine. Uh, if you don't need th a, a dedicated thigh swivel on your little action figures, and I know you're out there, then this probably ain't a problem for you. Uh, otherwise, I, I dig posing this dude. Also, his tail still has a bunch of swish back here, if you so choose. And then this is my favorite thing, which I think is going to be a lot more applicable on uh, Mugger, who's a lot more bestial and weird. But you got room here to flip his little his little vestigial arms forward, uh, and they, and they totally they totally work as extra arms. Like, imagine this on the proper Alicon version, and I think this is real on topic as, like, just a weird quintessent mutation thing. So Savage, uh, and, and more so, I think, by extension, uh, Mugger, uh, it's, it's a, it's a little, little poseable little dude. Uh, he's beefy, he's got just enough joints. It's just that if I could have my druthers, I'd love to have seen an above-the-knee swivel as well. What if I told you that the Savage slash Mugger design had a third mode? Well, guess what? I am. As a pseudo-Legends toy that was designed during the Combiner Wars era, this guy ended up with a weapon mode that's meant to be held by anyone with a 5mm compatible fist hole. The transformation is an interesting variation of the beast mode, and the end result lands on the stronger end of the robot alligator head biting a fist with a gun sticking out the back scale. Its only major negative is that there's even less of a place to put the gator arms than the robot mode, as the instructions just leave them sitting there. It's also a sizable weapon, meaning you'll need some strong joints to keep it aloft. But hey, it's got two obviously sculpted and painted discharge barrels, and it looks like a hand cannon that'd be equally effective as a bludgeoning device. Listen, this guy is first and foremost a preview of the main event that will be Corbot V's Mugger, but Savage fills out his variant theme pretty well. He's a Dinobot recolor, and the addition of original weaponry and a new robot head sculpt do a lot to show the passion behind that concept. But I've got to admit, he mostly makes me feel ready to grab a pair of the Quintesson colored primary release when that guy ships out. Because I am excited for what I'm seeing here. This is a solid little Alicon with a survivable and quick transformation that results in a fun and squat robot mode. The bonus gun mode is a nice cherry on top, but each aspect also comes with a solid point of contention for me. I wish the underbelly was a little more filled out on the gator mode. I wish the shoulder pads in particular felt a little friendlier to transform. And damn if I don't wish either a waist joint or an above-the-knee swivel had made it onto the robot mode somehow, though that desire absolutely comes into conflict with the nature of the transformation scheme. The price is Iron Factory competitive and feels like the finished piece just manages to squeak its way through that without feeling overpriced thanks very much to the overall build quality. As always with a small piece like this, if you're not tactile-minded, your mileage is gonna super vary from my own. By the way, shouts out to the credits in the instruction sheet, which reveal this to be another Jessalyn B design with art by V. Gordon and a healthy note of Vengsta flavor in the Savage department. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Evangelist, and I wholeheartedly admit that I am preemptively hyped to see two muggers and three titans return gnaws on my desk for the foreseeable future once both toys have hit distribution. Now all I need are some more comparable quints and quintessens to fill out my little tabletop kangaroo court and a big bucket of yellow liquid to drop Kranix into. I, I can solve that. I can solve that pretty easily by myself. I'm talking about lemonades, you sick fuck!